No, no, no not, not Postgres. Postgres, Postgres can scale to play this game. Can it? Postgres doesn't scale. Not the vacuum. Not the vacuum. Slonic is no match for security. But the test, it's only my sequel. Well. We would never do Postgres. What? Whoa, we did it. <laughs> Believe it or not, Planet Scale now supports both Postgres and MySQL. In this video, I want to talk to you about the differences in how you do indexes in these two databases, the similarities, the differences, and a couple of gotchas. Let's take a look. Before talking about indexes, it's important to understand how each of these databases lay out data in the tables themselves. In MySQL, the tables use clustered indexes, meaning that the actual table data is stored in a B tree, where the key is the primary key, and the values of the rows are stored right there in the leaf nodes. Postgres is a little different. All of the table data is stored in a dedicated heap file, essentially a big sequence of pages, and each page contains one or more of the rows of your table. All the indexes, including primary key indexes, go into a separate file, B-tree structure, or whatever other data structure it's using. Over here, I've got Postgres on one side, MySQL on the other, and they both have the same message, player, planet, etc. tables. What I'm going to do over in Postgres is I'm going to create a new index on username for this player table. And then we're going to run a query to look at all of the indexes that I have on the table player. And we can see that we have two. We have our player primary key index that was built by default for the primary key, which is the ID, and my username index. We also get the sizes here, so they're both just a couple hundred kilobytes. And the interesting thing is we can also take a look at information specific to the table and see the size of the table itself on disk. In MySQL, like I said, things are a little bit different. So I'm gonna go create the same index over on the player table. We have that created. And now I'm gonna go look at the size of all of the indexes. And we can see that the primary index, which this is, the index for the primary key and all the table data together is one and a half megabytes. And then my username index is a quarter of a megabyte. Both Postgres and MySQL support B-tree indexes, which is probably the most common type for relational databases. There's a lot of similarities, but there are a couple of key differences. In Postgres, the B-tree keys are whatever the columns are for the index, and the values are a tuple identifier. This is a two-part piece of information that stores the page number that the tuple or the row lives in, and then the offset within that page where you can find the row. MySQL, on the other hand, also does B-trees with the, the indexed value as the key, but the value for this is either the row data itself, if we're talking about the clustered index, or it's the primary key where it can go into the clustered index and look up and find that row. One of the big differences between the two is how they handle the maintenance of the B tree over time as elements get added and removed. In MySQL, the B tree automatically handles this process by merging nodes when things are deleted and the fill factor threshold is gone too low. So they're relatively low maintenance indexes. You may occasionally run an optimize, but for the most part, you don't have to worry too much about the indexes after you create them. Postgres, on the other hand, does not do any merging or cleaning up of old data, deleted rows, outdated tuples automatically. Instead, you have to explicitly tell it to do this kind of thing with a vacuum command. The username index right now already has values for about 10,000 rows. I'm gonna go ahead and run a script down here that's gonna add another 30,000 entries in the player table. Now that the script is finished, we can take a look at the sizes of the index and they have both very clearly grown. And we can also look at the size of the table itself and it has grown quite a bit. So let's go ahead and delete half the rows. We'll delete 20,000 of them. We'll do this destructive action, yes. So now you'd hope that the index would be able to get smaller and shrink. But if we take a look, 
the sizes are the same from what they were before. If we want to reclaim this space, we have to do something like a vacuum full on the player table. After that's done, we can look, and now we've reclaimed a bunch of space. That vacuum command went very fast in this example of a really small table, but with a large table with billions of rows, a lot of complexity, that can be a time-consuming operation. So you'd wanna be very careful about when and how you run that. Let's now try a similar thing in MySQL. I'm gonna run another script to add a bunch of rows to the MySQL database. We'll go ahead and add 30,000, just like we did before. Script is done. Looking at the sizes of things again, things have increased pretty significantly. Uh, we have our primary, our actual clustered index has grown, but also the username index is quite a bit larger. Now, let's try doing a similar remove that we did uh, in Postgres. So I'm gonna take these, and this time I'm gonna remove even more. I'm gonna remove 30,000 of the 40,000 total rows. Now, looking at the data size, come up, and we can see that things have shrunk though maybe not quite as much as we would have expected them to shrink given how many rows we deleted. It's not necessarily going to reclaim all of the space that it was able to because of the way uh, page merging works in B-trees, but we at least had some proactive space reclamation. Some relational databases support hash indexes. Postgres does. MySQL, if you're using InnoDB, does not actually, but let's take a look at this. I've got a query prepped here that I I'm asking it to create an index and it's even telling it to use hash. I can run this and MySQL seems happy at first. But if I go take a closer look at the indexes itself on this table and I inspect that one I just created, the first name index is actually of type B-tree. So it will just silently ignore hash, create a B-tree index instead. But let's take a look at Postgres. Over here, I can create this index. It will again be very happy. And I'm gonna use a little bit of a longer, more convoluted query to get all the information that I want about all the indexes for player. And here we can see that new index that I created is of type hash. Now, why would you ever want to use a hash index over Btree? There are some very small performance differences when you're doing a direct equals comparison. In a where clause, you may find hash is a little bit faster and slightly more compact representation on disk if you're concerned about space savings. Another type of index in relational databases are full text indexes used for doing text search in arbitrary strings, an index that essentially can tokenize strings and allow you to do more advanced searching in them. MySQL supports a dedicated full text index type. Let's try this out by going ahead and creating this full text index here on my table. It took 15 seconds to create. Now, if I want to utilize this index, I have to use some special syntax. I use the where, match, and against keywords to ask it to match for a particular string. So I'm gonna happen to know that this string appears in some of the messages. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And this is just a bunch of dummy data, but we can see that it was able to grab all of the message results that have that string in it. Over in Postgres land, we don't actually have a dedicated full text index type, but we can get similar results using an inverted index and using the TS vector function. An inverted index allows us to essentially go the other way and map the values that we are tokenizing to the rows that they correspond to. And then using this TS vector function, what this does is it allows us to take an arbitrary string and it handles tokenizing it for us, gives us back an array of all those tokens and we can build the index from that. And then now that that's finished, I can run a query also calling my two TS vector function on whatever, or TS query function on whatever string or set of strings I'm looking for. And then in this case, I also knew that there were some results like this. So we get the matching results with that coupon list string. The last thing I wanna talk about are partial indexes. These are not supported in MySQL, but are in Postgres. And so I wanted to call them out. Let's look at the message table. And one of the things we can see is there's the message itself. There's a couple of identifiers. And we also have a timestamp for when the message was created. Partial indexes allow you to create an index on only a subset of the rows in a table. Why would you want this? There may be times where creating an index across many billions or tens of billions of rows is gonna to be too storage intensive. And you also know that you only typically query a subset of the data. 
In this case, what I'm thinking is maybe we only want to do frequent queries on recent messages from the past week or the past month or the past couple of years. So what I can try doing is creating an index on messages that only come after a particular timestamp. In this case, sometime in October of 2022. So we're gonna go ahead and create this index that happened pretty fast. And let's take a look at all of the indexes that I have for my message table. So I have my primary key one, I have the inverted index from before, and then this is that index that I just created. And this is only on a subset of the messages, and we can show this by, let's say I create an additional one where I bump this date back to the year 2020. Let's give this index a different name, and then I'll create this one, took slightly longer, and we can look at my indexes again and see pretty clearly that that new one that I created is about twice the size. So there's a lot more messages included in that one. And this is kind of cool because if I happen to know, I wanna be able to give people the option to search, but only from a particular date range, I could have indexes just on those rows. There's a lot more that could be said here. We didn't really scratch much of the surface on performance. We didn't talk about geospatial indexes, but we're going to cut it off at this point. We covered a lot of the important basics. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy Postgres and MySQL on PlanetScale, and I'll talk to you in the next one.